right, what's up guys? This is Knife City from If Lands Could Kill. Uh, today we're going to take a look at my standard mill deck. Um, for those who don't know, I have been playing mill ever since I first started playing Magic, which was only around Gate Crash. I got the uh, Demir blue-black intro deck, which was half Cypher, half mill. Um, so anyways, this is the current iteration of that deck. So let's go ahead and take a look at the mana curve. Um... The one drop slot, we got four Thoughtseize. I mean, it's just a great card. First of all, I get to take a card out of their hand, put it in the graveyard. It might be a card that will, you know, help them get to their later drops. Maybe it's like a two drop creature that's just going to ping me and ping me and ping me. Um, or maybe it's just a late threat I can't handle. You know, whatever the situation is. Um, I'm going to be able to get something out of their hand uh, just for one mana and two life, so it's always good. The two drop slot, we got Essence Scatter. It's just counter target creature spell. Uh, with this deck, I want to control the board until turn five so I can get my threats online. Um, so I don't want any creatures out on the board. That's why we also have four Devour Flesh. Um, so between Essence Scatter and Devour Flesh, um, I can pretty much take out whatever creature I want in the early game. In the three drop slot, we have Crypt Incursion. Uh, when this card came out, I was uh, excited to say the least. I remember, uh, I forget what video it was, I think it was some SCG video where they... You know, where they go over the cards in the set by color or whatever. And so, you know, they went over this card and they're like, ha, huh, you know, new players are going to love this card because they're going to gain like six or nine life. And, you know, other than that, it's crap. You know, it's it's crap regardless, but new players are going to like it because they like gaining life. And I, you know, although I was, I still was new. I'm just, fuck, I'm still new. But with the mill deck, like, I get... 12 creatures in the fucking graveyard and then I'm back up to like you know 30 something life so uh, this card is crazy usually if it's an aggro deck once I cast crypt incursion they just uh, concede so uh, I, lo I love playing it because nobody expects it and they usually just quit of course heroes downfall like I said until drop 5 I just need to get rid of threats so run for those I'm um, running three Ashioks. It's just a great card because I don't have any creatures until five drop. And so it's nice to get um, some of their creatures out and start uh, maybe attacking in or, more importantly, just defending uh, myself. And sometimes I get to that minus ten. And not necess I'm not too excited about exiling their graveyard, but exiling their hand is pretty vicious if um, I'm facing a control deck. Uh, so that's always fun. And then to round out the three slot, I got four Pilfer plans. So basically, I draw two, you mill two. And it's just another card to kind of get the mill engine going. You know, it's nice with Thoughtseize, Essence Scatter, Devour Flesh, Heroes Downfall. Um... You know, maybe I need to Crypt Incursion early just to stay alive till turn 5. Um, so it's nice to kind of have some stuff in their yard. And I also forgot my lowly one Life Bane Zombie. I only have one. Well, because I only have one Life Bane Zombie on Moto. Um, but also, I, you know, I started playing it just because, you know, it's a good card. And, uh, you know, I have actually killed people just by attacking in with it. Um, but more importantly, it draws out their removal. Since I only have so many creatures in this deck, I think I have one, two, three, four, five. Five creatures, right? Um, it's nice that this kind of draws out some of their removal. They want to use removal on it. Um, I mean, obviously, just the ability of uh, they reveal their hand. That is huge, um, so I can keep up an Essence Scatter or Heroes Downfall or Counter Magic, or I can see that I need to Thought Seize 
Um, whatever it is, it's it's really good just to know what they have in their hand. And if they're playing green or white, uh, that's just icing on the cake for me. And it, like I said, it draws out the removal, and sometimes I attack with it, and I win that way. That's rare, super rare, but it's been known to happen. So that rounds out the three slot. Check out the four slot. I have one Liliana of the Dark Realms. I'm not going to lie to you that I was having some trouble with the four drop slot. Um, I didn't really know uh, what to put. I did have some uh, Arch Archaeomancers in there. It was nice to, you know, turn four, bust out an Archaeomancer, get my downfall back, uh, have a chump blocker for the next turn. Um, but it really wasn't doing enough for me. Um, and I noticed I was, you know, regardless of how many lands I had in the deck, like I need to hit turn five. I need to hit, drop a five drop on turn five. And I noticed I was having trouble uh, getting there. And so Liliana kind of, one, it fills the four drop slot. Two, uh, I get to search out a swamp card. Uh, three, it can be, she can be a removal if I need it, you know, plus X, plus X, or minus X, minus X, and on the rare occasion, um, I can take out a god with it, um, and then also, uh, they, people just start throwing, throwing creatures and throwing heroes downfalls at her, just, just because she's a planeswalker, uh, you know, they don't really know why, they just want her off the board. And that's that's fine with me. She's not all that important. It's, I play her, and then I get the swamp, um, and I'm good to go. Or I play her, and I just, you know, minus X, minus X. So it's a format kill spell. So most of the time, it's pretty versatile. I only have one because I just need spots in the deck uh, for other things. But uh, most of the time, she isn't a horrible draw. And if people do ignore her, I uh, just keep plus wanting her like I know I never ultimate her I think I altered her as a joke uh, when I was playing some kitchen table magic with uh, the rest of the guys in the podcast um, but basically I just want to get all my lands out of my hand so I can draw into some good shit also um, so I just plus one and sometimes minus three never alter the newest addition to the deck which is like four months ago but still soul ransom so, I enchant your creature, and then I control the enchanted creature, obviously. Um, and then, so this last part is for you. Um, discard, or this, this part right here is for you. Discard two cards. I sacrifice it, and I draw two cards. So, you discard the two cards, I sacrifice it, and I draw two cards. So pretty much if you want your creature back, you have to discard two cards, and then I get to draw two. So on turn four, usually maybe they've got a threat out that needs immediate attention. And, you know, instead of just killing it off, I can kind of, uh, you know, I can kind of Ashiok it uh, for the time being unless you want to, you know, discard which is great for me. Uh, just gets gets cards out of your hand, which is always good. And I get to draw cards, so I I really like this card. I I don't know why I didn't uh, see it until like four months ago, but hey, so I'm running two. I like them. And then time for the game closers, the five drops. I got three Jace Memory Adepts. Uh, I. Unless I'm going to lose, I... Unless I know I'm going to lose... Like, okay. If I play him, and I mill you, and then the next turn I'm like, shit. I need to draw Crypt Incursion or I'm dead. You know, then I'll plus one him. But 99% of the time I'm using his zero ability, which is... Uh, you mill ten cards. Which is fucking awesome. And once again, people throw themselves at Jace instead of me, so that's saving my life. Same with, like, Liliana. You know, if they want to take a turn off from attacking me to attack them, you know, go right ahead. Consuming Aberration. 
my boy, my boy. So this fucker's power and toughness is equal to the number of cards, just regular old cards, in opponents' graveyards. So just a quick tip, if you are playing a multiplayer game, you know, where it's three, four people, it's everybody's graveyards. So just to let you know. Um, and this also, once I get Consuming Aberration down, maybe it's only, maybe they only got eight cards, you know, five cards in their, in their graveyard. Uh, whenever I cast a spell, each opponent mills till they hit a land. Generally, uh, it's anywhere between one and three cards, just, uh, mathematically. Um, if, if somebody's, you know, running, anyways. Um, so it's anywhere between one and three cards. Sometimes, you know, you, you, an opponent will, you know, mill ten, and you feel, and you feel pretty awesome about yourself, and my recorder just started playing our latest podcast episode. Anyways, um, turn this fucker off. So yeah, he, he's awesome, and he, he keeps the milling going, which makes him bigger, and... You know, uh, I have some way. I have a way to get him through, to make him unblockable. Uh, but he's mostly just to defend, and maybe swing in and win the game in one in one hit. That's why I like about him. And this pesky fucker, Mirko Vosk, Mind Drinker. He is a two-four flyer. When he deals combat damage to a player, that player mills until they hit four lands. So that's really huge. You know, so let's say it's late game, turn 10, you know, just for the sake of argument, they have 10, um, 10 lands out, um, Milty hit 4, that is pretty damn uh, lethal to your library. Um, so people definitely want to get rid of this guy as fast as possible. But I only run two because he is legendary, and I just don't need a whole bunch of creatures. Same with Consuming Aberration. I only have two because I, I don't need any more. Uh, he's he's a house. And speaking of ways to get him through, obviously I got islands, swamps. I only run three temples. I feel like I can't take too much time off from my curve. It's really important, especially especially in the early game. To hit my essence scatters, to hit my devour fleshes, to hit my hero's downfalls. Um, I need all of those things on turn uh, two and three. So I don't want to take too much time away, but the scry is awesome, especially you know later in the game. But I do run two rogues passages, so it's tap to add a colorless to your mana pool, or pay four. And tap, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Who would I want to turn unblockable? Maybe a 27-27 unblockable? Yeah. So, oh yeah, the sideboard. Um, so this deck has been pretty much the same since Theros. Minus the Soul Ransoms. And I think I had the Lilianas in here. Anyways, um, it's it's been pretty much the same since Theros. Uh, the sideboard kind of fluctuates depending on the meta. Like, I haven't played this deck in a while. Um, at FNM or even really Kitchen Table. I've been working on other decks and I haven't even been playing Moto all that much. Uh, so this sideboard might be a little outdated. Um, I do have some Dispels in here. Uh, last time I was playing on Moto, there was just a shitload of... Uh, like Azorius Control or Blue-White X Control. So the Dispels and the neg Negates are desperately needed against a Control matchup. Because against a Control matchup, I lose Game 1 immediately. I almost... I, I never do it, but I almost just concede the first game. Because if they're running like a, you know, Elspeth No Creature Control deck, most of my deck is dead to it. Essence Scatters, Devour Fleshes, Crypt Incursions, um, Soul Ransoms. It's useless. So uh, I definitely like being able to side out for a heavy control matchup. 
Um, Omen Speaker. I don't even know why the fuck Omen Speaker is in here, really. Um, maybe against Agra. Oh, I know. I was having some hard time, or hard, a hard time deciding uh, what I should put in my sideboard, and my two biggest um, matchups that are difficult is, you know, no creature control, and, like, straight up aggro, like, one, two drop aggro. Um, so Omen Speaker kind of helps with both. I didn't have a lot of room in my sideboard uh, for a lot. So I was able to settle in Omen Speaker because one power three toughness that is able to stop a lot of the early game aggro. And I get the scry too. And then it's not horrible for the control matchup um, because I do get the scry too. Um, and it, I just, I really need something to take out in place of my Devour Fleshes or Essence Scatters. Um, and this was like a good compromise that was effective, mostly against aggro and kind of against control, just because I can, um, scry to and, you know, block a Elspeth token or swing in for one or, you know, draw out some of their removal on it or whatever. Um, but, you know, I, I might take it out. Who knows? Next we have Drown in Sorrow. Yes, this is an amazing card. All creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Just sweeping the board of the aggro. Um, also with the... There's that green-white, like, enchantment deck. It sweeps a lot of their stuff away. Also, um... Dark Betrayal, uh, I had more in there when Mono Black was just stomping the countryside, um, but I still think it's good. One mana instant to kill a Desecration Demon, that's that's awesome. Or Pack Rat, that's great. Can't pass it up. Also, we have two Notion Thieves. Um, I'm pretty sure these are still like viable options to have in here because... First of all, it's a flash 3-1 for 4 mana, so body, not that impressive. Um, basically, if you would draw a card that's... N okay, if an opponent would draw a card, except the first one he or she draws in each of his or her draw steps, instead that player skips that draw and you draw a card. So divination, flash this in, nope, my cards. Opportunity, flash this in, nope, my cards. But my favorite thing to do is Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, because a lot of those decks are dead um, if they can't draw cards. So I don't care about your life total. I'm just trying to mill you. So you gain all that life, but I'll take your cards. And a Pithing Needle because why not? That's one of the best sideboard cards in the history of sideboarding. Actually, I don't know. I'm just making that up. So anyways... Let's hop in a game. Hopefully there's no assholes, because last time I tried to record this, which was like a couple months ago, there was nothing but assholes on, um, and I got all pissy and, you know, you know, started telling them where to stick their dicks and there's dead butts. Whoopsies, I had to go get something to drink there. <clears throat> Man, I went to uh, Slater's 50-50. I live in San Diego. Uh, would you like to play first? Of course. And this looks like a really good opening hand. Um, I can play Watery Gray first. No play turn one. Essence Scatter, Devour Flesh, play two. Heroes Downfall, play three. I will keep. Anyways... I live in San Diego, <clears throat> San Diego, 
and there's this burger place called Slater's 5050. I don't know if they have them everywhere or just here or I don't know what the deal is. But anyways, looks like we got fucking mono red here. Anyways, they have these, they got awesome like make your own like burgers. But they have these habanero, um, habanero poppers. So instead of like jalapeno poppers, they're habanero poppers. First time I ever had them was today. And good God, they hurt the butt. And I'm going to go ahead and counter this because it's forever going to be a 2-2. And this, this is really dependent. So it might be a 3-1, might be a 1-1. One, one. I'm just going to go ahead and Essence Scatter here. Legion Loyalist, son of a bitches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do your thing, buddy. <sighs> so... I can temple <clears throat> on his turn, Devour Flesh. Next turn, Hero's Downfall. Or I play the Swamp, Hero's Downfall. Next turn, Temple. I think I'll do the Temple now. Get it out of the way while I have a two drop. Mirko Vosk. <clears throat> I need that fifth fifth mana, so you're gonna go on the bottom, buddy. Let's see what this guy has. Damn it. Fucking aggro decks. Legion Loyalist Loyalist is a really good card. Go ahead and devour flesh now. Of course, he's going to get rid of the denizen, of course. What? Rebel Belt Maka? So he's blood rushing this little guy for plus three, plus three. All right. Oh. Titan Strength, look out. I think somebody's about to shoot their wad. And a shock. Woo! So I'm going to get a towel, because you just shot your load. <clears throat> With this deck, I do end up uh, going down to a small amount of health uh, but I usually go back up and I'm just gonna eh should we wait? let's wait yeah I usually go in down I usually go down to about you know 12, 8 health before uh, the tides turn and I just start screwing shit up screwing their shit up or as the Spaniards say, fucking shit up. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if they say that or not. <sighs> See, stuck at four Mianas. So he has one, two, three, four creatures in his graveyard. So that's 12 health I could get off Crypt Incursion. Because remember, exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard. You gain three life for each card exiled this way. Pilford plans, my boy. So they mill two, I draw two. Let's see what I get. Oh, two Jaces. And I get a mountain and a madcap skills from him. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like he shot his wad. 
and I'm going to go ahead and run the Jace out. Oops, shit. And he's probably going to concede. Go ahead and zero him again. Play an island. And just to be on the safe side, I don't like to uh, play cards when I don't have to. Dragon Mantle. So if I destroy this, he doesn't even get to draw a card, correct? Yep. Begin sideboarding. So, uh, bring in those Drown and Sorrows. And I don't even... It's been such a long time since I played uh, this deck. Probably just take out the Downfalls. They're the most expensive removal. I feel like I want to take this Life Bane Zombie out and put the Omen Speaker in. And take out uh, one more downfall. Alright, looks good. Pardon me while I drink. This is not horrible. Uh, fuck it. Yep. Temple. Show me potato salad. I don't have any five drops. I'll run into some lands later. That's what I always say. And then I always get fucked. So go ahead and th th thought seize. Some people dislike the thought seize against the aggro deck. Um, so plus three. So with the Titan strength, he can scry. With the madcap skills, he's kind of stuck with it. Take that Titan strength out of his hand. I don't mind Crypt Incursion, or I don't mind Thought Seizing when I have Crypt Incursion in my hand. Madcap skills. So I'm going to be taking eight. Oh, that guy has haste. Eh, nine. I've seen worse. I'll get the scry. Ha, forgot. I was like, what the fuck is that? Um, bottom. Rakdos. Uh oh. Uh oh. Aww. Sorry, buddy. Get out of here, Swamp. Nobody invited you. Boom. That's it. 
that was a really easy aggro matchup. Um, kind of shocked, actually. So, sweet. Yeah, that's my mill deck. Um, if you like it, you know, leave some comments. If you don't like it, leave some comments. If you want to kill me, uh, go ahead and send those to uh, 123 Fake Street at uh, springfield.com. Um, but seriously, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of our videos. I don't know what those crazy uh, guys in the cast are up to. But they're always putting out great content. And whenever I get a chance to go over there and record with them, uh, we have a blast. Hope you guys enjoy it. So, uh, catch you guys on the flip side, right? Later.